right on to our presenters, which I would happily introduce to them right before we start. I always like to know who I'm introducing. So these folks are pretty important to this day. Starting with Sheila McAllister, she is the director of the Digital Library of Georgia, a Galileo initiative based at the University of Georgia. As she directs statewide efforts to create free online access to resources about the state's history and culture, she has presented nationally on digital libraries and archival description, acted as a digital library consultant, we need to talk, and reviewed grants for the National Endowment for the Humanities, National Historic Publication and Records Commission, Council on Library and Information Resources, and the Institute for Museum and Library Sciences. Matt Callister currently serves as the Digital Public Library of America Service Hub Director for Georgia. Russell Palmer, co-presenter, raise your hand, Russell. He's the Assistant Director of Support Services at Galileo. He and his team provide technical support. We know how important that is, right, folks? And the training for Galileo libraries and users while maintaining Galileo systems, content, integrations, and reporting. Russell and team also contribute to the development of new Galileo features and functionality. Please welcome both of our co-presenters, Sheila McAllister and Russell Hunter. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much. Uh, it always you always feel more impressive when someone else reads your bio. <laughs> it's like I did all that. Wow. So, well, thank you all so much. It's such an honor and a thrill uh, to be here uh, with you all uh, for the African American Symposium. Thank you to the George Archives for working with us, coordinating with us, inviting us to uh, to speak and present. We're we're happy to be here. Uh, we, uh, I want to tell you a little bit about Galileo, what we are and what we do. How many of you, I bet some of, I bet if there's a lot of raised hands, how many of you use Galileo or Digital Library of Georgia already? Lots, lots of raised hands. So some of this will be very familiar to you, and I hope I can bring to you some new things uh, along the way. Um, so our learning objective just quickly today, I hope that you'll know a little bit more about Galileo, our mission and vision. Just want to tell you a little bit about us and share what we do and how we go about it. Uh, know how to access Galileo at your library or at home, um, navigate and search in Galileo, and then identify key resources containing information about African-American history and genealogy. It's going to be a, probably a little bit more of a lean on the African-American history from what I present on the Galileo side, and Sheila will be able to lean a little bit more into the specifics on genealogy, even though I will touch on genealogy a bit. So we are an uh, initiative of the University System of Georgia, and we're actually uh, uh, sister organizations with Digital Library of Georgia, uh, with uh, the Georgia Archives, and with the Georgia Public Library Service. We all live under the same Board of Regents hat. Um, we're, uh, again, in the same reporting line. That makes collaboration for us really easy. Uh, so we really enjoy working with our colleagues here at the Archives and at GPLS. So what we do, uh, we do have our mission. Uh, we serve as Georgia's statewide virtual library, uh, and we want to provide that equitable access to information, both at our colleges and, and universities, but also across our public libraries and our K-12 schools and many of our private and uh, academic institutions and private K-12 schools as well, uh, along with our technical colleges. So we work with most every library in the state, which also makes you, every library in the state pretty much you'll have Galileo available to you. Uh, as a walk-in user. Now, different institutions have different rules about that, but generally you can walk in and use Galileo at, at, at a library. So uh, you have access to tool, the tools that are necessary to help Georgians become lifelong learners. And I'm always interested to engage with genealogists because you all are just the pinnacle of lifelong <laughs> learning. There is so much that you learn about history, research, family history. It's just such a, a, a really strong and diverse way of, of, of learning about our world, and I appreciate you all so much for what you do with that. Uh, we uh, form partnerships, obviously, that create open access to historical, cultural, and educational content, and uh, uh, Sheila plays a key role with her team with that, with the Digital Library of Georgia. Interfaces that are easy to use, and we work at that all the time. That's a big part of what I do, and we also facilitate efficient and cost-effective provision of library services. A lot of the content we share with you all, we license on behalf of the residents of Georgia, so everyone has access to it. Uh, and a lot of it is very freely accessible as uh, as Sheila will share. 
So our vision, we want to facilitate the creation of knowledge and provide tools and resources for all Georgians to meet their lifelong learning needs. That's our goal uh, at Galileo and our vision. Just some of the programs that fall under, and I love the way Sheila always puts this. Sheila, I always love how you frame it as Mother Galileo. There's Mother Galileo, which started way back in 1996 and houses uh, all of these other services. It started with the Galileo portal where we collected uh, some subscription databases to make it easier for students at the university system schools to do research. And our mission is greatly expanded now. We have the Digital Library of Georgia, which Sheila will tell you more about later, but you will see some of the fantastic digital collections, everything from photographs to newspapers, uh, anything that you can think of about the state we have uh, collected, digitized. It's a beautiful collection. Um, Affordable Learning Georgia. This is an initiative that focuses primarily on the university system. Anybody taking classes at a university system school or have you in the last maybe five or six years? Yeah, so you may have gotten a free textbook, a free digital textbook as part of your coursework. That's part of the work that we do. We have saved, I believe at last count, uh, I think about $1.4 million in textbook costs for Georgia students. So that is a big part. Jeff Gallant leads that initiative at Galileo and they are doing an outstanding job. And then we have the Galileo Interconnected Libraries. If you've used Galileo, again, at a university system school, you've looked up a book, that's how you've done it. We also connect all of our libraries so that you can borrow materials very easily back and forth, forth between them all. We also partner very closely with the New Georgia Encyclopedia. How many of you may be encountered in the New Georgia Encyclopedia doing uh, very strong on African-American history and genealogy research there? You can often get ground yourself in a concept, an event, or a person very nicely using the, uh, the uh, ah, New Georgia Encyclopedia. You wanna make N national all the time. <laughs> and finally, the Georgia Knowledge Repository is another initiative that we support. This is where we collect scholarship for uh, from all of the university system co uh, colleges and schools, but also many uh, private academic institutions as well. So we're very busy. We do a lot of stuff and we work very hard to keep all of it up and working. Any questions about anything so far? Okay, that's the hard part, telling you about us. Now, I, I love telling you about the stuff. <laughs> So uh, this was, I loved this uh, when I saw it, I was just looking at the New Georgia Encyclopedia. Um, it's interesting for me, uh, actually someone, I my grandmother's both quilted. Uh, quilting is such a powerful thing. Um, we display quilts uh, from my, both, both my grandmothers in our house. Um, and people notice that it's almost, it connects everyone in really interesting ways. But as I was looking at images related to African-American history, preparing for this and thinking about what we have, this is from the New George Encyclopedia. And this uh, is from Harriet Powers. And she did some very powerful biblical quilts. And she was she lived in Athens and she had been a slave and uh, then was a freed slave. Uh, and then she started displaying her quilts from time to time. And someone at an art school in Athens noticed this and wanted to make sure that her work was shared. So I just thought that was a beautiful story. Uh, and quilts, you know, have meaning for uh, many of us uh, as we look at things. But I just want to share a little bit about that. So now I'm probably going to move out of my slides, honestly, and just show you around accessing Galileo. And again, some of this for some of you may be very very uh, old hat, but I want to make sure that you're well grounded in this because I think there are a lot of powerful things that you can access through Galileo to help you in any and all of your research, but specifically we're going to focus on uh, African American history and genealogy today. So how many of you have public library card? Awesome. I, I imagine that the numbers would be very, very high. That's all you need to access Galileo, um, whether it be Fulton County, Clayton County, um, all the surrounding counties, all you need is that library card. Gwinnett, you're still using a password if you happen to be from Gwinnett County, but that won't be much longer. You'll soon just be logging in with your library card from Gwinnett. Um, we have made a very strong push to make sure everybody can just log in with that library card. No more remembering those silly passwords is what our goal. Just need that card. So uh, that's that should be wrapped up pretty soon for all of our public libraries. We're working on Forsyth, Gwinnett, and um, Cobb right now are the three that we have to wrap up. So uh, all you need is our web address and then you can go. Um, again, access is available through most of our public libraries in the state. I say most because we have a couple of independent public libraries out there that aren't under the GPLS hat. Uh, most notably, there's one in Noonan, there's one in Smyrna, 
where you may not get access to Galileo. So, um, and then K-12 schools, colleges and universities around the state. Again, if you wanted to access Galileo at a college or university, you may want to speak to someone at the reference desk at that college or university before you go and access to make sure they have what you want, what you need, what their hours are, and are you allowed to access it? But you should be able to access it in most of the libraries in the state. So logging in, we've tried to make logging in as easy as possible. You can find your library, but a lot of your libraries will have a direct link to Galileo in the state. You just can find your library or even your library branch by name. And then you go. Um, so I'm going to log in and this is where I escape and start showing you around live in Galileo. Is uh, we're just going to pop in right here. I'm already logged in and actually when you're here in the building, we also provide Galileo for the Georgia archives. Uh, again, I talked about my team as the support team. A couple of weeks ago, Georgia Archives Galileo broke. We fixed it. <laughs> so, uh, so it's always interesting when we have to break break and fix things. So, uh, but I'm just going to log in just because I'm from Athens. I'm going to log in via the Athens Regional Library System just so you see how easy it is to access Galileo using your library card. Now, I have kind of a fake library card number here. Also, it's always fun when you're presenting on some computer that is not your computer. So bear with me. <laughs> I did it again. Sorry. Might be three times before we get it right. There we go. That shift button is ever so slightly different than where my shift button is. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and log in here as an Athens Regional Library patron. Ah, I knew that might do that this morning. If it does that, you're already in. Just go back to Galileo and you'll go. All the bad things happen when you're trying to do something live for people, right? So here I am. I'm actually logged into Georgia Archives, but I'll just stay with that. But just you saw the login process is pretty. Yes, ma'am. Questions, please stop interrupting me. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So I want to make sure that we talk about that. Yeah. Mm hmm. So if you have multiple, I don't know exactly how Pines assigns cards, but you can, you're generally assigned to one library. If you have multiple library cards, that, that it's tied to whatever library where you sign up to it in terms of logging into Galileo. Yeah, question in the back. Okay. Oh, uh, technically no. Where are you located? Utah? I don't know off top of head what uh, initiatives, uh, digital library initiatives are available to you in Utah. Utah is a very strong library state, a very strong state library. I'm certain that something is available to you. Yeah, uh, that would be similar to this. But that's a great question. Thank you. I did not realize we had a interstate audience. That's wonderful. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that. Other questions? Thank you both for those great ones. So I'm in here now uh, and uh, I can, uh, do uh, my navigation. I just want to show you how to get around. Um, we have a major, majorly long list of databases. Generally, even for public libraries, we have over 100 databases. This is at 212 different databases that do different things available to you. I'm going to highlight some of the ones that focus on African American history. But if I was looking specifically for, when I go here, I want to focus on things related to history. I can go ahead and click search here in my box. And it's going to give me access to things like the History Reference Center, many of the history databases that we have. We have some free resources like Metropolitan Museum of Art has a really excellent timeline of art history, for example, uh, resources from the National Archives. So there are a lot of free resources in here in Galileo as well. Um, we have these uh, University of Georgia, Georgia History eBooks, but you get the idea that there's a lot of historical material available through Galileo uh, that you can search. Uh, so that's, uh, if you have a known database, for example, let me go ahead and uh, clear my search and start over here. Uh, one of the databases I want to make sure that you're aware of is eBook Central. Now, your public libraries locally provide you access to lots and lots and lots and lots of eBooks through, some of you may use the Libby app and other things. These eBooks work a little bit differently. You can get mobile access to them, work with your local librarians to help you out with that. But uh, eBook Central, about between eBook Central and uh, the other eBook source, I'm going to show you EBSCO eBooks. You have access to over 600,000 eBooks from Galileo. 
So hundreds of thousands of ebooks, many of them with a focus on research and reference, but also some fiction, some nonfiction as well. We're not going to have your bestsellers. That's what your public library does. <laughs> we have a lot of good, really great books for research. So, and so that's again finding a specific database, and we'll take a look at eBook Central in a few minutes. So we often get questions about, well, what if I want a specific publication? I'm a genealogist and I use XYZ Journal all the time, or I'm interested to see if a certain newspaper might be available to me digitally. Um, I can go to this all journals area here. And this is just basically a list of all the publications that are available in full text via Galileo. So if I come here and search, I'm just going to start with just putting in genealogy, uh, if I can spell it right. Robin, you were saying genealogy like 14 times, and I did not envy you because it's a hard word to say a bunch of times in a row. It's also a hard word to spell. I have to think every time I say it. But you can see there are lots of publications, the Journal of Gen Genetic Genealogy, um, Annals of Genealogical Research. So there are a lot of publications specifically about the practice of genealogy available in full text through Galileo. And once you find a, a journal that you might be interested in in full text, if you want to see the date coverage, if you click on the little link at the bottom, it'll give you links to specific issues. Uh, well, in this case, yeah, this, this is actually a little bit different. It's an open access journal, but it will um, usually give you a list of what's uh, so this is journal of Afro American history and genealogy society. This is going to be awesome content for you. It's going to take me out to a page where I can browse it by year um, volume and issue here. There we go. Yeah, question. Mm -hmm. Something going in the library. Yeah, something's at home. A great question. Uh, so the question was, for those who may not have heard it in the back, is can you access all of this at home or is some of it in the library only? Uh, what's what's the access method? When you walk into your library, you will be able to access any of this uh, without logging in. If you are at home, uh, you have to log in and then you can access any of it with one big fat ugly exception. <laughs> That's Ancestry.com Library Edition, which Galileo makes available through all of our public libraries. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a few minutes. But that one, the vendor makes, we, we would love. And during COVID, we did make it available at home, but they are very strict on how they want us to access that, unfortunately. It's a great question. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, they, exactly. They'll think, oh, they'll get frustrated. They'll be at home. They won't want to go to the library. They'll pay for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I will, and you, you probably don't, I'll give you two seconds of background on that as I have tried very hard to negotiate that with them to no avail. I have gotten close a couple times with, uh, with one thing we would not agree to, and that was for them to advertise Home Edition, big and fat on our website, and we would not agree to that. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an ancestry product as well. Yep, I know. <laughs> She's got exciting news. Yes, that's Sheila's baby. Yeah, not at all. Yep, yeah, I can't wait for Sheila to tell you guys about that. I'm gonna go faster so Sheila can get to her stuff, which is more exciting. <laughs> so, no, thank you for that. Uh, but that's, uh, those are great questions. Thank you all so much, anytime. Um, and I will talk a little bit more about Ancestry in a few minutes. Back to Galileo, just the main page. I always try to start back at the main page to avoid confusion on how I'm getting to things. So navigation wise, and then in the spotlight, if you go to your public library, um, I don't know why spotlight is maybe we took it off for archives, but generally in the spotlight, if you go to your public library, Ancestry is going to be front and center right here so that you can just click on it and go. Uh, it's in the spotlight. It's one of the most popular, as you can imagine, one of the most popular resources that we have in the state. So if you're there in the library, it's right there for you. Oh, just while we're talking about it, alternatively, when you are at home, you do have access to Heritage Quest, which is a subset of the Ancestry records. So you can do some, maybe you scratch that itch so you don't buy <laughs> Ancestry Home Edition. 
Uh, but I, again, I'll talk about that in a little bit, but it is available for you as well. Um, but it is a it is a fairly small subset compared to what's available in the library edition. OK, so great question earlier. You asked about Bento search and classic search. We do have two different search modes on Galileo now. We have spent a lot of time and energy uh, in creating the Bento search, and I will talk about that. Yeah. Bento boxes, exactly. So we're, we're getting it. <laughs> Bento is fun. Bento comes from the Japanese concept of the lunchbox where you have the different sections. So we looked at uh, a lot of other libraries. We noticed that we noticed Duke was doing this, Stanford is doing it, and we got to keep up with the Dukes and the Stanfords of the world. So we designed our own Bento search uh, and we love it. So what we wanted to do is we sort the content by what it is. So if it's primary source material, there's a box for it. We actually have a de designated box for Digital Library of Georgia material. Uh, we were able to connect directly to the Digital Library of Georgia and the Bento search and bring out those results. So if I go and I search in my main search box here, and the point of the main search box before I'm teasing, before I get to it, is to be able to search <laughs> most of Galileo content in one easy to access place right on the front page. Now that can create great success. It can also be problematic. Sometimes it's easier and you're going to be more specific and have less to go through when you search in an individual database. But at times the Bento search or the classic search are going to help you get started or help you kind of see what's out there broadly about a topic. So in the Bento search, I'll search Georgia. Well, I did several searches with this because it was really good, even with DLG. I'll do Montgomery. Sorry, I'm in bus. Am I still spelling it wrong? I just didn't capitalize it. This will give you an idea of how well Galileo content generally covers African-American history topics. So the scholarly articles, uh, encyclopedias, I get encyclopedia articles specifically about uh, Montgomery bus boycott. Ebooks, they're awesome ebooks on African-American history, culture, genealogy, um, in-depth studies uh, in, in many of these ebooks on those topics. So very rich resources there. But if I pop into the Digital Library of Georgia box, which you see, if you don't see a box going down the page and you kind of want to go directly to a box, notice the boxes populate across the top and what we call these little pill buttons. I click on the pill button and it'll open that up for me. So I don't know. Yeah, so we have um, attention mounts at bus station where blacks wait for Montgomery, Alabama bus 1955 and other materials here. A feature on Martin Luther King, other things. Bus to segregation in Atlanta. Uh, so lots of content there. Again, she will cover Digital Library of Georgia in more detail in a bit, but just wanted to show you how quickly and easily you can get to that Digital Library of Georgia content through the Bento search. Uh, but that's what the Bento is designed to do, is to break the content down for you so it's a little bit easier to know what you're looking at, what you're getting. Uh, encyclopedias, you will see there's a Funkin' Wagnall encyclopedia that comes free. There's also um, some sites, not all of our public library sites, but a few of them have Britannica uh, online. But then all of our academic sites generally have that. And then also um, we have our New Georgia Encyclopedia, which is taking me out to an article about Coretta Scott King here. So you can see this will take me out to the digital, pardon me, New Georgia Encyclopedia article. I'll just have to link out to it. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. That's what it's designed to do is give you access to all the Galileo content from one easy to easy to search place. Now to the classic search, uh, let me just show you one more thing about uh, like if I'm Digital Library of Georgia, I got 5000 results here. I want to limit those results in the Bento search. I can limit them by the type of record records they are, moving images, still images. These emulate what you'll see if you're actually searching in the Digital Library of Georgia. They're the same things. Um, the creator, uh, where it came from, basically. Subjects, you know, I can go always click on one of these and, and drill down further. So it's designed to help you get that initial set of search results too, and then drill down within that Bento book box using those limiters, including date, date range. So lots of ways to limit once you're in there. So that is the Bento search. And you may have noticed anytime you're lost and you just want to go back home, if you click on the left hand side, it'll take you back to the nice, comfortable confines of the home page. Yes, question. Mm -hmm. Yes, 
So is mm -hmm. that a where I can just narrow down mm -hmm. uh, what's in my local Genealogist Society or so that's going to be what's in the Digital Library of Georgia in that case. And Sheila, would you want to speak to what county, how can county limits work? Uh, sure. We describe, we, we try to bring, if, if it's a known a county is known, we try to uh, reflect that in, in, in sort of the description of the thing. And mm -hmm. so when you do a search and you get results back, um, we have those limiters and call, what they're called or facets is another term for it that are in, on the left. And so, um, you'll have be able to choose uh you might let's say you're looking for baseball which is my favorite search time <laughs> uh even though, yeah. um and i want to see you know what i want to see atlanta baseball in atlanta, at yeah. in atlanta then i'm going to pick Fulton under the county i'm going to pick Fulton county you all there's also a location one as well a location filter but we uh DLG understand that counties are super important in Georgia, much more so than in other states. And so we make sure that that we know that people want to limit that way. Yeah. And to Sheila's example, and, and just kind of quickly going back, I, I love searching about baseball too. I love searching about baseball in Digital Library of Georgia and Georgia, Georgia Historic Newspapers because the accounts of baseball games from historic newspapers are hilarious. There are stabbings, there are fights. It's amazing. <laughs> Right. Keep us from having to travel. One of the research things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, is it just general information or the top five that all? Is it family? Is it? Because I'm looking for my family. Right. So, um, I let. Yeah, let's transition to. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Sheila's going to focus in on that. I'm going more broad. Mm -hmm. If you are doing genealogy, mm -hmm. the, the first place that I would start, if you're in a George, if your family is a George in Georgia, mm -hmm. is Georgia Historic Newspapers. And that's where you're going to find it. Um, what's in DLG is more, um, we part. Not every library has digitized materials. Not every historical society has digitized material. But we we have many. We have at least we have like three million pages of newspaper. Yes. Historic newspaper included. The yellow so through the Digital Library of Georgia, which is part of us. And again, Sheila's going to specifically focus on DLG after I wrap up. So yeah, she'll get into that with you all. Yep. Yep. That's that's a great question though, because I. I do that sometimes. I love searching the newspapers for specific family members. And she was really good at that. Yeah, this is not the ideal. Right. And I was going to mention that too. We we will at some point have a newspaper bento and it probably but just to surface things in Galileo as well. I think we've talked about that and there's some limitations to that right now. Ultimately we will, but to Sheila's point, I think it'll always be easier to search those newspapers for those specific types of things in the newspaper database itself, which she's going to share with you. Yeah. Thanks. No, great questions. We love the questions. Always helps us to focus on what you want to learn. So, so I want to just focus on a couple of databases to wrap up. I mentioned Ancestry, um, and I, I mentioned that is available uh, on site. Just in case you haven't seen it, and I bet a lot of you have. Um, sorry, I'm in Sheila's presentation, not my own. Um, is uh, there the things that are available there that are I think particularly helpful for African American uh, research or, or census records? Death certificates, manifests, there are the Freedmen's Bureau records, the bank records. Um, obviously, you have to be in the library to use that, but I wanted to go ahead and, and offer those details. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the Heritage Quest is available to, to use at home, and it's a subset of those records. And also, feel free to take all the pictures you want, but you will have our slides, absolutely. So, yeah, yeah, so, yep. So, just wanted to mention that also, and uh, just a few other 
resources and I'll hand it over to Sheila that I want to mention. I mentioned eBook Central. I just want to show you sort of the power of that as a research tool. Um, again, more related in, in my case um, to African American history uh, and 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 events in African American history and reference books about African American history and civil rights. So go ahead and just find that and show you. Just this, just just we have so much good content here uh, in eBook Central. So if I search here in the eBooks, I'm just going to search again uh, my search for Montgomery. If I can spell again. I misspelled some. Oh no, there it is. You see that you get a huge range of books, um, reference books. This is a historian reference guide, and you can read all this online. You can search it. If you had a relative, for example, at the Montgomery bus boycott, and you were curious as to whether they were mentioned in this particular text, uh, as, as it is a reference books, so when you go into the read online area, you can search within the book. So you, there's there's ways to, to do that. So you just can search within the book right here. So you can browse the book by chapter. You can read it online completely and access, again, hundreds of books on uh, African-American history topics. Yes. So that's going to be your public library. We do not provide at this point uh, e-audiobooks, but most of the public libraries in the state have a uh, overdrive slash Libby collection where they do offer that. Mm -hmm. So on our ebooks, there is none. Basically, there is no artifice of checkout like there are for some ebooks, like for your for your Libby ebooks. So there is no limit. You might encounter a book. It's rare. We have a very small handful of books that have a limit of one user at a time, but it's very rare. Most of our ebooks are licensed to have multiple users, and there's really no time limit on the usage. Yeah, yeah. It works a little bit differently than the public library ebooks you may be used to using. Question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that each database handles that a little bit differently. Um, I know Sheila's uh, the Digital Library of Georgia database. She'll cover all that. That covers it really well. Uh, what I would say is if you're in a database and you want to know how to do that, let me just show you quickly. Um, almost all of them have a help screen, like a search help screen that'll tell you how to do a wildcard search. Generally, it's going to be a star or a question mark. So if you want to just try those, it may work without having to look up the 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 uh, actual spelling. And I know Sheila will cover that. It's a little bit different than how it works in, in Digital Library of Georgia and uh, newspapers. All right, just again, making sure I cover everything here. Sorry, and I keep going back to Sheila's presentation still because I usually put mine up. <laughs> so EBSCO eBooks look, look and work very similarly. I mentioned Ancestry. We do have access now. Galileo does provide access to current newspapers, and I know that's not always the most helpful thing when you're doing genealogy research, although you might want to look at, at them for a variety of reasons. If you're looking for a current obituary, that type of thing, uh, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, it's mostly large national daily papers, New York Times, um, AJC, Los Angeles Times, Washington Post are all available for access through your public library, Galileo. So just to quickly just show that, um, and then I'm going to um, hand it over for questions. And then, Sheila, I wish that teams would find a way to let me move <coughs> that out of my way. It's always in my way. So all databases, I'll just again go here and click. And I'm just going to go. We have them in here by name to make it a little bit easier to find. So if you go into the A's and just browse to the second page, I believe, you should get access to third page. We've added more for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. So and again, that's just that's current access. I don't remember off top how far back it goes, but I think it goes back to the 2000s, uh, early 2000s. Uh, so you do get some back files of that. So if you're looking for like a current um, or, or, or up to date um, obituary or, or family member maybe mentioned in current news or that type of thing, you can you know, do that here. Now, I will say your local local public libraries sometimes subscribe to a more powerful newspaper tool, like I know Atlanta, Fulton does, uh, Gwinnett does, um, a couple of others subscribe to a database called Newsbank, 
that lets you have even a full text, full image access to those newspapers, which are a little bit easier to use, quite honestly. This is purely full text. When you find an article, it's just going to be the text of the article, none of the images, although they may have an associated chart or image included in line occasionally. Question? Sure. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Um, a lot of the current national daily newspapers that you mentioned mm -hmm. are available online. Has this been shared with our senior citizens? And I'll say that because so, yeah. they're being caught off guard with delayed print paper we they like to look in, and some yeah. of them don't have the technology access or ability yet to realize when they log in online, they say, oh, sign up for your subscription or you can't read an article. Right. Are they being made aware that they can get up in the morning when they get their so. <laughs> their, you know, obituaries and that. You don't realize you're scratching at a very, very deep wound. <laughs> no, understand. So, sure, sure, sure. I knew about some of the things, mm -hmm. but it's almost like how we go down into the woods, down the rabbit hole. Yeah, no, I feel you. <laughs> I spend a good chunk of time just looking really around. That's what I advise you to do. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to have to tell the family history. Wait till you see Sheila. <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. I'll come back to myself later. Right? Let, me, let me answer your first question while you're thinking about it. So, Georgia Public Library Service, our local libraries do promote that they have newspapers. Newspapers are in high demand, as you know. As you may know, there's been new and different types of restrictions coming from the Atlanta Journal Constitution on access to newspapers through some of our databases. Exactly. So uh, there is work being done in that direction. Um, it is moving along slowly. Sheila, if you want to speak to that briefly before you come up or while you're up here, you can. I don't know. If, yes, Sheila will do that when she comes up. She knows more about it than I do because she's been tortured by it more than I have. So, yep. Yep. Yes, ma'am. You might find a few. Uh, there's also another database. There's an EBSCO newspaper database that's available that may have a few of those. EBSCO. Let me show you where it lives uh, while we're here. And I want to make sure we have plenty of time for Sheila, but yes, there are. Um, sorry, it is so hard once you get in here to get back to anything with teams. Forgive me, forgive me. So this is another good use of the Bento search. I love it because I can go in uh, and I can search for newspapers. And it'll give me all the different newspaper databases that I have access to. I wanted to mention Chronicling America too. Have you all used Chronicling America? Yeah, Chronicling America actually Sheila has the Georgia Newspaper Project, and those Georgia Newspaper Projects, along with newspapers from other states, are part of the National Newspaper Project, and they feed up to Chronicling America. And Sheila, you can, again, elaborate on that. Yeah, but I wanted to mention that here, but that's historical newspapers, and there's Georgia newspapers. You have the news and newspapers here from ProQuest, which is a broad database search. That's where those individual papers come from. But then you also have Newspaper Source Plus. And all of these will should have a publication list on them near the top of the screen right here. So you can look and see what's available. Mm -hmm. Is there your funeral home used to own back in McDonald, Georgia, and they sold and sold and sold and find final ancestors homes? A lot of these funeral homes, they have these programs because they keep one or two in their file. Is there a project to get them in the <laughs> archive so family members can yeah, we'll that. that? Let me tra transition to the wonderful and talented Sheila McCallis. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Okay. So um, I know that folks in the back couldn't hear me before when I was talking. Is this better? Okay. I apologize. I speak quickly and I speak quietly. So if I'm doing either of those things and it's not working for you, please let me know and I will try to like take a breath. <laughs> so um, Okay, slideshow. 
All right. So um, I made lots of beautiful slides, and now I'm not. I'm probably only going to show you about five, about six or seven of them um, because you guys had so many good questions. Um, and then I'm going to sort of delve into um, delve into some of the different uh, uh, what we call portals or, or websites that would be of interest probably to you all. So who is the Digital Library of Georgia and why should you care? So we are, as, as mentioned before, sort of the cultural heritage, so like museum, library, archives, historical society, those kinds of um, organizations. Um, we work with them and we help them digitize their materials to make them freely available to people. And these are materials about the um, state of Georgia and the people and the culture and all the things. Um, we have hundreds of partners already, but as, I, as, as you may guess, we have not partnered with everybody. Um, we are trying to partner more and more with folks. Um, we are very good at partnering with um, libraries, and we're very good with par at partnering with um, archives. Um, we are working really hard to work with um, more more with museums and with um, with uh, local volunteer-run historical societies and. Um, and sort of archival, you know, memory groups. Um, so one of the groups that we've worked with um, most recently is the Regional African American Museum of Northeast Georgia, um, and we're we're working with them to sort of figure out what those kinds of organizations need. So that's probably more than what you wanted to know about that. Um, so we um, we have three different portals. Um, dlg.usg.edu, which it, many people just call the Digital Library of Georgia. We also have a, um, a website called the Civil Rights Digital Library that covers the American Civil Rights Movement. Um, and then we have Georgia Historic Newspapers, which is, uh, which is newspapers from Georgia from starting about in the late mid 1700s on forward with obvious gaps so they'll be and we'll get into that a little bit so we really are looking at um bringing to sugar bringing together um primary source materials from all of these different memory organizations in georgia or in the case of the civil rights digital library um, across the nation so there are digitized books, manuscripts, photographs, government records, newspapers, maps, audio, visual, video, and all sorts of things available in there. We've got uh, in the Georgia portal alone, we've got over what we call a, a million digital things. So that would be like, if you think of a book as a thing, that's, we've got like, a thing is like a photograph or something. So we, a million pieces of data in whatever format it is. Yes. Right. Not not just scans, but 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 entities, right? Or as librarians like to call them, digital objects. Um, and then we work with um, you know hundreds of institutions of government and um, cultural heritage, and then at our Georgia. Uh, newspaper portal, we've got about 3 million pages. So I wanted to focus a little bit on some of the kinds of records that we have that are relate, related to genealogy that you might be um, interested in and sort of point out some, um, some collections that might be of particular interest. Um, and um, so cemetery records, um, Gospel Pilgrim Cemetery in Athens, ha we've got some uh, materials from them. Cairo has some um, uh, cemetery records. And then the Laurel Grove um, Cemetery in Savannah. 
we have done a project with, um, oh, is it Oaklawn in Oakwood? I knew I was going to say it wrong. In, in Atlanta, the, the material, the digitized materials have just not made it to us yet. Um, so so that's that's a place to start. Those are some highlighted collections. There are also um, census related records and that includes and I will share these slides afterwards with folks so you don't have to. Yes, I will. I will um, share the slide deck with Robin and tell her that sh to share them with you all. Um, Georgia government publications. We have digitized almost. We digit have digitized since 1994 all of the um, publications put out by the government of Georgia. We also have digitized numerous um, ones prior to that date, but the most comprehensive um, coverage is going to be from 1994 uh, on. Um, there are um, there's a group of slave schedules called from the Mary Turner Project. And then if you are from the Atlanta area, there is lots of great census maps and, and like in um, a collection called Planning Atlanta. The Mary Turner project is specific to Atlanta. Um, I'm going to have to look that up. Um, church records, as you know, are are super great for um, genealogy um, in particular. Um, we include in that category funeral home collections uh, our uh, funeral program collections and there are a number of um, funeral home collections that i wanted to point out to you um uh there's um the atlanta funeral programs collection which was a partnership between the atlanta Fol uh, auburn avenue research library and Offgas. um there's also a funeral program collection from Willow Hill that um, was a pro a project that uh, they did um, with uh, South University of South Georgia. Um, Thomas County Public Library has a large um, collection, and all and Augusta um, Richmond County Public Library has a collection, and we have worked with a regional African American. Um, Educational Museum and Claxton to digitize some of theirs. And on this map here, um, where there are bigger dots, that means we have more, um, more uh, funeral programs and where there are smaller dots, we have fewer. So that's kind of to give you an idea of the coverage. These are the types of projects that we love to do. And so, um, you know, one of my we are also looking have are going to try and have some discussions with the um the georgia african-american and heritage preservation network um to see what what things that we can do to help dig digitize more collections like these <clears throat> to this so um ways you can contribute one would be um if if you're if you are uh public libraries are often really great partners in those kinds of projects they also have special money secret money that they 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 can use they have a person who's dedicated just to doing digitization projects in public libraries they have two people now um and so that's a good way to do it um if you if you are a part of a a like a volunteer run uh, history history organization, um, we have a sub granting program that I can talk about a little later, um, and give you information about um, where we donate serve where you apply. It's a, a pretty short. Um, application about two ish pages. We also hold your hand the whole time. And that's how the um, folks in Claxton got their funeral programs done. Um, so that's another possibility. Um, and um, I think Willow Hill worked with South Georgia to um, have their funeral programs done as well. So there are a lot of options out there. 
Um, and we know that these are critical and so important when you're doing uh, African-American genealogy work. They just tell you so, so much and they're pretty amazing. And so as I'm doing genealogy in the, and I'm specifically talking small uh -huh. what can be done to require funeral homes to mm -hmm. provide that information to this? That, because they're totally delinked and when you go to a lot of people, that, homes, they don't have them. Or yeah, they, they so that so that is well, that is beyond my control, unfortunately. So so what I would say is that me, big DLG people, but people don't connect with that at the local level. Where they connect with is the public library, and so or the local historical society. And so if you get if you sick them on the funeral homes. <laughs> which is I'm trying to get them to do that with newspapers for me. Um, I think that's going to be a better way to get that to happen. But I do think that, um, you know, we have one set of digitized funeral home records um, from a funeral home in Lincoln County. And that's that's all we have right now. But can anything be done over a law? Oh, that's, you know, where, where it's mandatory. That that. You will have to talk to your uh, elected officials yeah. about that one. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yes, ma'am. Some of them closed, like Spear and Spear, and I called, and the men, they've been doing it for since the 18, whatever. Well, there's somebody down there know something. Oh, I know. That's what I'm about to follow up on. But thank you, because that's where we're going. Because they literally say they tossed them out. And I'm like, toss them where? You, it's part of your history as a funeral home, so why would you? They don't toss. They don't say it. They don't say it that way. No, they don't. Oh, this is new. My my what what I'm running into. There's a uh, church, Long Street Baptist Church, in Cochrane. There's um a lot of my family member. From mm -hmm. 1825 on, I know, is buried on the church ground, and that's going to be another issue. They're not really taking records of who's not there. Right, they're not. No, that's and they're, what's happening. Well, they resold. So they have, no, they still there. I yeah. haven't found yet, but they still there. The, the thing is, you, at this point, since you're in this look at encouraged churches that has this uh -huh. underground to make right. records. And make record no. My desire is to encourage the not to sell out to Escondido. Well, I, I'm not. I, I can worry about that. I'm talking about your your loved one is there on the church. Right. right. They should have some type of record. Right. Yeah. Right. right. My my brother-in-law church. To this day, I asked him, "Do you know the people that's in the ground? The family knows, but the church doesn't have the, the plot and, 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 right. and stuff like that. Right. That's just something encouraged. Right. Um, no. There's a lady in one behind you who's got no, a comment. I, I ran into the situation that my um, commissioner said most people don't even know what genealogy is. Exactly. And another, it is so it requires education yeah, but in the community. <laughs> but not only that, um, you may or may not, like I do, have a relationship. Our organization does not have a relationship with public library based on their decision. So the only recourse that I have going forward is I know some of the funeral directors personally mm -hmm. and if I can get in and, yeah. and, and, and if you have to think of several ways to find right. this information. And, and if I may she like, yes, please. In, in that particular subject area, I would highly advise you to redirect those questions during our ask the genealogist mm -hmm. because you'll have a lot of odds members who are actually engaged that, in that kind of work and can inform you of like updated intel, particularly okay. with the Auburn Research Library. <laughs> Yesterday, that presentation was very excellent. Really? But you know, there's some other strategies, especially in our smaller towns. Oh, right. We need to come together. Yeah. yeah, and I, I'll say that um, we are seeing more and we we are getting more and more um, in our subgrant program. We have had more and more um, churches in partnership with another like organization successfully apply for one of our subgrants. We've got a couple of churches in Gwinnett who have 
very early records um, and that we're digitizing for them that that also contain information about African American members. I think one is Island Creek and the other one might be Swanee something. Um, so those will be coming online in the next nine ish months or so. But we are trying to reach out to those smaller organizations and and we're hoping that building a, re a relationship with the um, the Georgia African American Heritage Preservation Network will help us do that. And so I have a call with Mary on Tuesday or Wednesday next week. So I'm we also have maps. Yay, maps. Um, I'm going really fast. Newspapers. We'll talk about newspapers. Um, I would say ad nauseum, but we only have 10 minutes. So um, CD directories are awesome sources. Um, we have done lots of city directory digitization. A lot. There are over 700 of them available now. Um, again, I did one of these little heat maps where you can see where we have most of them from. Um, as you, I'm sure, already know, in a lot of these the early earlier city directories, if it was an African American business or an African American family, it was denoted with a C. And I've highlighted that on 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 the Athens Clipper, um, which was a newspaper in Athens, Georgia, related to the Jerule Association. School records. We have more and more of these coming through. Um, in the bottom, you'll see that historic school photograph collection that um, was mentioned um, earlier. We have, um, and as we have materials from lots of materials from Clark from the uh, Atlanta University Center. We did a huge grant project with them um, several years ago to digitize their university publications, including newspapers, yearbooks, the whole Shazam. Um, part of what's awesome about that also is that the periodicals, so like the yearbooks, the magazines, all of those kinds of things that came out every year. Those are also in the Georgia Historic Newspapers database, which makes them full text searchable, which is, as a genealogist, probably what, that's why I would say go there first. Okay, vital records, I'm pretty excited. We did a project with the Georgia B. Williams Nursing Home Center that was down in uh, South Georgia which was a um, nursing home for black women to give birth. And so this is these are the handwritten registries of um, Ms. Williams. Um, so that's a really amazing collection. Also, that site was uh, a couple of years ago was one of the most endangered historic sites in the country. And then um, there's also some bedside birth, some birth records from uh, the Neville Lamasson Memorial Library. Death records and marriage records, of course. But so let's get down to what you really want to see, which I, I, I would like to think is the Digital Library of Georgia websites. Um, we're going to start with Georgia Historic Newspapers because I think that's where you're going to get your biggest bang for your buck. Uh, yes, and I can spell. Okay. So this website is available to anybody all over the world. You do not have to pay. We've got about 3.2 million pages of Georgia newspapers. Um, we add new content every week. Um, you can, if you want to see really quickly, if you're, um, you're, uh, the title you're interested in, what issues we have, my suggestion would be to browse by title. We've got, and then it's thinking really hard. Um, most of our newspaper content, because of copyright law, 
most of the stuff that we have digitized is going to be prior to 1928 because that means that we can make it freely available to folks. Um, we we have pretty uh, we have been really, really uh, trying as hard as possible to um, sort of be comprehensive with what we have available to us, which is the new which is microfilm from the Georgia newspaper project. And, and so we have up until about 1877 digitized all of the stuff that's part of the Georgia historic uh, the Georgia newspaper projects microfilm. So that's 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 as comprehensive as we can be. And then we've been seeking grant funding to do more. Um, we have the I'm very excited to say that we are in the process of um, trying to work with a competitor to Ancestry.com to um, let them use our um, news, our, our microfilm of public domain newspapers, and they will digitize them according to our standards for free. Mm -hmm. They will ingest them into their system. Um, they will have we will not be able to put them online for a year but after a year we can put them online and there will be no additional um restrictions put on them so that i'm looking at the contract right now <laughs> legal affairs i should say is looking at the contract right now so so there may be a big jump in the next year and a half in the in the numbers and the kind of content that we have in here um so this is, I love this list. You can, um, you'll see the dates. You'll see how many issues we have. Um, so this is a, this is like, if you're looking for your, your newspaper, this is the place to go. One thing that we have, I also, in addition to doing all of this digitization, I can't say this word, and this is my job. Digitization work that I do, I also run the Georgia Newspaper Project, which is the Newspaper Preservation Project for the state of Georgia. We are going to be stopping microfilming because, hold on, there, the word, we have a pro, we have a plan, we have a plan. I swear to you, um, we're going to start stop microfilming uh, in um, at the end of um, this fiscal year. We have started to work with current newspapers. To, for them to deposit their um, their their issues, born like in a born digital form, we have about thirty five different papers that we're working with. One of which, woohoo, the Savannah Tribune. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, so if we go, okay, first we go and look at that. Um. No, nope, you can go straight to the you can go straight to this website. Um, and uh, these handy dandy little cards that folks got passed out, they have a little tiny baby QR codes on them. They will take you to a list of uh, with um, what we call can searches that will search in the digital Library of Georgia, the like that Georgia portal for um, different types of um, genealogical types of records. So things like census records and that kind of thing. And as stuff gets added to that list, at, added to the resource, that search will work and it will just auto update. So yeah, because nobody needs to remember. Um, one of the There'll, there'll also be a link to Georgia Historic Newspapers there. So um, as you can see, uh, we have pretty recent issues from 2008 through 2011, and they're sending us more. So um, it's, mo as I said, it's mostly older papers, um, but there are some newer ones.
lately where I had something on Ancestry where the transcript still looked the same. The baby image of the actual census looked the same. When I clicked on it, the pages had shifted and were out of order to the person I was looking for. No, I would not. The answer, I have absolutely nothing to do with Ancestry, so I, I have no idea. So we we use our, let me show you an example search, and then I will stop because I, I've been told I would talk too much. <laughs> and I didn't talk about the things you wanted to hear, so I'm sorry. Can I um, just yeah. interject? So you all, uh, family, we're about ready to go one minute into break, but if you want to give her a courtesy three to five minutes, you can agree to that. Are we good with that? And hold yeah. the question. And hold the questions. Oh, come on. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. So one thing that's really great um, it, with this newspaper database is that it's got, um, it allows you to do um, word proximity searches. So, um, which for genealogy is amazing. Um, and you can also choose to only look at African-American newspapers. You can also choose to only look at certain cities. So you can really sort of drill down. So um, uh, anybody have a search they want? Just give the Peter. Oh, you said an African American. No, no, no. Just a just a word, oh, okay. a phrase. The two citizens. Okay. Is, uh, oh. Well, I know we have that digitized already. So, <laughs> um, here, let me do this instead. Um, I know this is this is just what I can do on my feet. So what you see here is the words are hit. We have hit highlighting. Um, and then when you click, let's look at this Marine Tiger, which is a Morehouse paper. Um, you actually see the page. You can also zoom in or out and you can clip, which means, um, this is that big grant I told you about. You can clip the visible area, and what it'll allow you to do is you can download the whole page. If you want, you can look at the OCR, which is you know the way that the sort of how the computer oh uh, sugar how the computer sees the um, You can also um, look at the uh, move in, next page, previous issue, next issue, clip visible area. You can uh, also view the page text. So that that's that dirty OCR. Um, and then um, you can also um, download a PDF. Um, since you all are very experienced geologists, uh, and I've already heard people say things like spelling is weird and don't forget about things like um, in a lot of older newspapers, they use abbreviations for names. So WM for William, JAS for James, that kind of thing. Um, also know that a lot of these older newspapers, um, the OCR is eh, because a lot of times you have broken type that that those newspapers were run on and so when the microfilm gets created you know like an o could be a c could could sit to the computer might think it's a c or an e so um you want to be kind of creative about the way that you think about searching and also sort of think about like how language has changed over time so like if you wanted you know they had so the term "feeble minded" refer this would you would when you're talking about the state hospital in Milledgeville at the in the in the earlier times they would call it they would do reports about the, the hospital for the feeble minded. So just remember that language changes over time, and you want to choose terms that are appropriate to that time period. 
Um, other questions? I also invite you all to take a, a look at the Civil Rights Digital Library. It's awesome. It has tiny little biographies of people who are reflected in, in the records. And it also you can also search for particular events. But um, I figured this would be, if running out of time, the newspapers would be the thing to look at. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.